Ireland, who unfortunately, as we know, won't be there, took on USA on Saturday. Did you see enough, Eamon, to suggest? And I did read your piece at the start today, yeah. you know, which, again, you said, look, there, there was some positives and, and individual performances to yeah. maybe to grab onto, but overall, the direction that the management are taking uh, still looks clueless. It's a total shambles. I mean, the playing, James McLean playing left wing back, and but the, there's some, let's look at the positives, O'Dowd and Rice, some very, very good players, you know, um, Shane Duffy has grown in stature, you know, in the Premier League for Brighton and with for Ireland, but my God, the tactics are, I mean, it's very hard for, for players, you play for your country and you're put out into a team with no structure, no shape, um, and it's the same with any sport, rugby, Gaelic, soccer, team has to have a shape, uh, everyone has to know what their role is, they need to understand what they have to do, I don't know, I'd say it's absolute hell for the Irish players um, playing for this guy, he has not got a clue. I mean, I, you know, people go on about, he hasn't got a clue, Hugh, I, I honestly, I was watching it, I thought, my God. Well, you, one, of, one of the points you made was that he had James McLean and Seamus Coleman playing as, as wing-backs, effectively, which is not getting the best out of their, their skill and talent. Well, uh, James McLean was 60 yards, uh, if he was 50 or 60 yards up the pitch, he'd be causing all kinds of problems, we know how good he is. Crossing the ball, we know how good he is. Uh, you know, running at defenders with the ball, he scored some very important goals. It's, it's, so he started a, as a wing back, but he actually ended up as a centre forward. So what are, what's going on? To Seamus Coleman, you know, Seamus is a very good player. And he, if he gets the ball on his feet, we don't have to have him stationary uh, about you know forty or fifty yards in front of the three uh, at the back uh, because he's getting he's there too early. You want Seamus running on the balls into space. There's no space where he is at the moment. So it's a bloody mess, and there's no work being done. Set pieces. Um, were very, very moderate. You must remember, this American team, average age 22, yeah. at the end, they had about six teenagers on the pitch. I mean, they couldn't kick snow off a rope. The right back, this guy called Yedlin, was just hopeless. And if McLean was at him, you know, he'd have killed him. But they had, they left all their best players at home. So we were embarrassed. We got a goal in the end. You know, I was very pleased for Judge. He's a good, great young lad. Yeah. And I was pleased for Burke as well. He got a goal and he looks enthusiastic. But when you're making your debut for your country or you're in your early stage of your international career, it doesn't help if you're thrown into a mess. Because then nobody knows uh, what's going on. Uh, again, Long playing on the left side of three. You know, he's a right-footed player. Things like that. If you really knew what you were looking at, you think, who the hell is, you know, running this show? And it'll show when they play the Nations Cup games. Denmark, Wales. Anyway, yeah. They, yeah, they'll be embarrassed. And I think the crowd... You know, we'll remember what your man, the games he was playing with Stoke to try and get a Premier League job and three months when he wouldn't sign his contract. And um, we'll see what happens, but I can assure you it's not going to be pleasant. If Martin O'Neill's here, he might say, look, I'm trying new things here. I'm, I'm trying new players to try and see what's out there and that this isn't the strongest 11 playing our best style of football, but, but that will come when we have to come against competitive teams. What would you well, say? Well, the evidence is there that that doesn't happen when we play. You know, the evidence is... I mean, you just take James McLean. Would you play him... If you were playing against him, would you rather he was attacking your 18-yard box with the ball at his feet or guarding his own 18-yard box? It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Callum O'Dowda. Yeah, very, very good. And he stepped up to the plate in a big way. You know, it was really nice to see. Um, he stepped up um, and got on the ball. He's got a lot of skill. He's got a trick. He's calm. And he's a very, very good player. And he, well, he's a potential to be a very, very good player. And he played really, really well. And uh, the Rice as well was outstanding. You know, the goal was really good as well. The, the winning goal, Rice had a hand in it. Seamus Coleman had a hand in it. James McLean had a hand in it. When he was playing centre forward at that stage. And, you know, it was put away by George, Alan Judge. It was really good. I just, I, I really want to be try and be positive about this team because we're, we're coming into a new cycle now. We will have a new major tournament to aim for once the World Cup is over. Um, but we're getting a lot of texts in here, Amy. I'm looking at them, and there's a lot of deflated 
fans out there yeah. who are just saying, well, look, I paid X amount for a ticket over yeah. the weekend and I, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I don't have the money and, yeah. uh, you know, while I want Ireland to do well, I can't support the team as it is. No, there was 30,000 people in the stadium and, and it's a big night. If you, and it's an expensive night. If you're bringing a couple of kids or, you know, for yourself, tickets are expensive. Um, and there's something seriously wrong. This is one of the highest paid managers in the international community worldwide. Uh, and this is not right. It's seriously wrong. Um, it's bad for the players. It's bad for the fans. There's arrogance and, it, and it's kind of... Well, we'll see what happens, but I'm telling you now, this is going to be, be painful. Declan Rice is, is, is the one, I suppose, yeah. green shoot that we are all clinging on to. Hopefully yeah. he, he will make his competitive debut when we can put all these England uh, rumours. Yeah, to he's an outstanding player and he's a, he's a, a good type of lad as well. He took a lot of responsibility. Callum O'Dowda did as well. Like They're both very, very good indeed. And we have good players, you know, to come back in. David Myler, people like David can get a game, you know, hanging around for... See, when you're putting new young players into a team, you should put them in one or two at a time. If you throw them all in together, it's not fair. You should put them into a settled setup where they'll have a defined role and they'll know what they're doing. And that's the way it should be done. Um, but of course, you know, it's not done um, here at all. And uh, you shouldn't really get stretched and look like losing a game against the American under 21 side. That's, yeah. It should be, you know, you need the confidence to win games. People need confidence to express themselves. Um, and they need to feel, it's like, uh, it's not rocket science. It's like any junior soccer club, any Gaelic team, any rugby team. They need a good coach. You need simple instructions. And you need to play to your strengths. That's all it is. It's not rocket science. And I feel sorry for the players, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, on that cheery note, Damon. Thanks yep. for And uh, <laughs> go back to Axel Moria again at the Cora. <laughs> oh, good luck. Bye. Thanks.